Hey entrepreneurs, it's Sam Day here from Day Tips and in this video, I'm speaking about your meta title and your meta description for your Shopify website. Now, first and foremost, I want to go over what your meta title and what your meta description actually are so you know what they are when you see them within your dashboard in Shopify. So basically your meta title is the title that someone will see within the search engines and the description that someone will see within the search engines as well. Now this meta title and meta description can help to kind of give an outline of what that page is about both to the search engines and also to users as well. So uh, if I go to Google and let's say for example, I type in baseball, then I search, you will see the first search that comes up, uh, this first search result is Wikipedia and the meta title says baseball hyphen Wikipedia and they also have a meta description here. Now, a couple of things that you should take note of is the fact that the, the term baseball is actually highlighted um, and bolded here in, in the, the meta description. Now, Google does this on purpose because I've used the search term baseball when I was searching Google. So it will highlight the key terms that are actually in the meta description. So whatever keyword you want to rank for, you want to make sure you put those keywords both in the meta title and in the meta description as well. This being said, you don't want to keyword stuff. Now keyword stuffing is when you just try to include loads of keywords in your meta title or in your meta description. You don't want to do that. You want to stay away from keyword stuffing because that can actually have an adverse effect on your search engine optimization. You want to make sure that you have your keywords in your meta title and in your meta description in an organic way that still reads well to users so if it, it doesn't make sense to users then it won't make sense to Google and your likelihood of showing up in the search engines for that keyword will be pretty slim now I often get asked how many keywords should you try to rank for on any particular page well one thing that you need to remember is that each page and each article or product page even that you add to your Shopify store is a new opportunity for you to be found in search for a different keyword so each page should be optimized for a different keyword don't try and optimize a page for five or six different keywords and put all of those keywords in your meta title or meta description make a page specifically around one keyword that you want that page to rank for it's a lot easier when you do that to rank for that one page if you try to rank for five or six with one page then you might probably miss all of them and google will be confused your searcher will be confused and you'll probably end up ranking for nothing. This is why it's a great idea for you to start a blog. I always recommend starting a blog for Shopify stores. Now, if you're selling a product and you have limited products, then that means you can create blog articles around topics that your ideal customer will be searching for and you can actually optimize each of those blog article pages for different keywords and this can increase traffic to your website from organic search. So now I'm going to head back into my Shopify store and I'm going to go underneath here to where it says online store. You will see where it says preferences and here you can actually add your home page title and your home page description. Now this is uh, your meta title and your meta description for your home page, which is really important. I highly recommend that you add some brand keywords here as well. So whatever the name of your Shopify store is, then put that in there so that it's prevalent and people know what your brand name is. I also recommend in your home page, meta title or meta description to go after what is known as a short tail keyword. Now I speak about long and short tail keywords on this YouTube channel and I'll leave a link in the description down below to some of my keyword tips. And I usually recommend to go after what's known as long tail keywords. So let me define both of them so you have an understanding of what they mean. So short tail keywords are basically keywords that are short in nature. Now how you can recognize a short tail keyword is basically a keyword that is not really descriptive. You don't necessarily know what someone is searching for. So an example of a short tail keyword might be baseball. Someone who just types in baseball, they could be looking to buy a baseball, they could be looking for baseball tips, they can be trying to figure out whether baseball is a good sport for them to get into. So it's really vague and it's really competitive as well because there's so many websites that are competing for the term baseball and that have the term baseball on their website in multiple places that it's going to be almost impossible to rank for that keyword. 
But if you have a longer tail keyword, a keyword with say three or four words or sometimes even longer than that, then these keywords tend to be more descriptive, more in depth. For example, a keyword such as is baseball a good sport for my son? That is a really long tail keyword and a lot less websites are ranking for that. So you're competing with a lot less people and you are a lot more likely to actually rank for that keyword. That being said, long tail keywords tend to get less traffic than short tail keywords. However, if you are ranking for the right long tail keyword, then the visitors that do come to your website are probably likely to convert a lot higher because they know exactly what they want and when they stumble across your website, they're on a page that is specific to them and they are a lot more likely to take a call to action. So why do I think it's a good idea for you to have a short-ish tail keyword for your homepage title and meta description? Well, your homepage is likely to be your most authoritative page. It's the page that most people will link to if they are referring to your website on their website. So most of your backlinks will actually be to your homepage. As well as this, if people are sharing your website on social media, nine times out of 10, they will share your homepage more than any other page. So as a rule of thumb, your homepage tends to have more authority. So you might actually start ranking over time for a short tail keyword. So you might want to optimize your homepage meta title and meta description for a short tail keyword. That being said, you still want to be somewhat realistic. You don't want to go after a short tail keyword such as baseball, but you might want a really competitive term that gets a lot of search volume and, and you want to try and over time make your website competitive enough to challenge for that keyword in the search engines. Now you can do some keyword research using a few keyword research tools and I'll leave some of them in the description down below along with some of my videos on keyword research so you can see what keywords get the most traffic for your specific industry and what keywords you should be going after. So I also have a, uh, a blog page up here um, and all you have to do to get to a blog page is again go to online store and then go to blog posts like I mentioned. I highly recommend you creating a blog for your Shopify store because it's great for search engine optimization, not just so that you can add pages and include different keywords per blog that answer your potential customers' questions, but also if you are updating your website regularly with blog posts, then Google know to come back to your website often. If your website is not being updated often, then Google have no reason to come back and check on your website. But if you're updating your site constantly with new blog articles, then Google know, oh, let's come back to this site and actually check this site for new content. I often get asked the question, Sam, you know, I've published a new a new product page on my website or I've published a new article or I've published something on my site and it's taking forever to show up in Google. Now that's normally because your site has been dormant for so long that Google are not used to coming and checking on your site. And this is simply because you don't publish content on your site often enough. That being said, you can actually submit a URL directly to Google using the Google Search Console and I'll probably be touching on that in a later video. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and click that bell notification button as well so you don't miss when I put that video live. But that being said, you still want to make sure that every blog article you publish, you actually change the meta title and meta description to fit that blog post. So when you go to your blog posts, you should see the search engine listing preview and you can edit this. And this is how you edit your page title. This is how you edit your page description. So this basically means your your meta title and your meta description. And you can also change your URL and add what your URL will be here. I also recommend whatever your keyword is, make sure that that is in the URL of all of your pages as well. And you can use a little hyphen as well between words. So let's say, for example, my article was about uh, the best baseball tips and that was my keyword. Uh, best baseball tips was my keyword. Make sure that's in my, my title. I would want to make sure that that is in my description. But when I add that keyword to my URL, I would add best hyphen baseball hyphen tips so that Google knows that these are individual words rather than just one word mashed together. So you can do the same as well for your product pages. Um, when you're adding a new product, you can actually go all the way down, scroll all the way down to search engine listing previews and do the same for your product page as well. And this goes for adding a, a, a normal page to your site. When you're adding a page, you're adding a title, you're adding content, 
and you can edit your website uh, meta title and meta description. Now, another thing about um, adding pages as well is you want to try and make sure that you add your main keyword in some way in your title and in some way as well in the body of your text. Now, uh, Shopify allow you to add what's known as a heading one and a heading two tag. And basically what this means is these are important important words that Google will take out of your page and identify as important keywords that you could potentially rank for. So let's say, for example, this was a page um, about baseball tips as well. And that was your main keyword, tips for beginners. You, let's say that was your title for this particular page. You can highlight that you can click on formatting and you can choose heading one. So now that is, is, is a heading, but it's also telling Google, look, this is a really important keyword. So whatever keywords are really important, you want to put them as titles and use a heading one tag so that Google know that these are important words. And if you also have subheadings, let's say you give five baseball tips and one of them is uh, how to hold a baseball, for beginners, that might be also an important keyword. You can highlight that and you can make that maybe a heading two tag. So um, you wanna have a, a main title as a heading one and then a subtitle as a heading two. And Google again will know, okay, these are important keywords um, and they will take that into consideration when they're ranking your page. Now, that being said, whatever keyword you do use in your titles, your heading ones, your heading twos, and your meta description and meta titles, you wanna make sure that it's actually really relevant to your page as well, because relevancy is super important. If your keyword is baseball tips, then make sure you're actually giving really useful and helpful baseball tips and make sure it's in depth as well. So I would recommend going to Google and searching whatever your keyword is, see what other websites have done and see if you can outdo that. See if you can create something that's even more valuable than what is already out there on the internet. And that's a really great way for you to actually rank in Google. Now, once you publish your page, you also want to try and get backlinks back to your site. This is something that I speak about in the formula, which is completely free as well. This is the free guide to generating leads and sales to your business online. I speak about search engine optimization tips. I also speak about other things such as email marketing, paid advertising, social media, and how to get your business where you want it to be online with the marketing tips and strategies that are actually working today. So make sure you go and grab your free copy. I will leave a link somewhere in the description down below and also on this screen as well. But I really do hope that this video was useful and valuable to you. And if it was, then please click the like button down below and make sure you share this video with a friend. If you have any additional questions or comments, then leave them for me in the comment section. But until next Next time, watch some of my other great videos. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more awesome business related content. Have a great day. Make sure you download the formula and I will see you soon.